Okay, you're on. Okay, here we go. I'd like to call, are you ready, Jeremy? Yep. I'd like to call the village board for Tuesday, February 26th to order roll call, please. Trustee Allison Williams. Present. Trustee Zerbel. Here. Trustee Mark Williams. Here. Trustee Bukowski. Here. Trustee Melcheski. Here. And President Kardoski. Here. Please. And Trustee Paul is excused this evening. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And please remember all the men and women throughout the world in uniform. Um, I, need, I have no additions or changes to the agenda. Moved to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve that. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carried. Action on minutes from January 22nd, 2019. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve those minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. <laughs> uh, comments from the public must be limited to items not on the agenda. Comments from the public items not on the agenda. There is no public out here except for Andy and he's here for an item agenda item okay moving on written communications I have none none received from the office of the clerk treasurer okay number eight action on consent agenda request to approve operators license B action on annual renewal of a conditional use home occupation license located at 1161 Blue Ridge and C department reports Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve that consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Can I ask a question? Yes. How come uh, 10F wasn't in there? 10F. Uh, that one is being um, renewed, um, requesting for a three month period, not a full year. Okay, thank you. Okay. Number nine, public hearing. 9A, public hearing on ordinance number 02-3-19, repealing and recreating section 17-2-2, parent 3, parent 1, parent G of the 2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-
of the Ashwaubenon Municipal Code regarding maximum allowable percentage of exterior insulation and finishing systems known as EPIS. Mr. Schutte. Okay, the uh, requested ordinance amendment here is to actually increase the allowable use of uh, the exterior insulation and finish system or EPIS uh, from the current maximum of 15% per elevation to a maximum of 30% cumulative uh, across a building, uh, all elevations, not to exceed 40% in any one elevation. Uh, the request came at the uh, request of staff to, uh, based upon recent development proposals, uh, there was a, the, uh, the Cambria, for instance, is uh, one of the uh, development proposals requesting additional use of EFIS due to uh, construction costs and additional insulation uh, value associated with it. The 15% that was originally identified in the code was not based off anything specific. It was a, um, you know, a, a shot in the dark as far as what we thought might be appropriate. The 30% threshold uh, is what we consider now to be a benchmark uh, based upon actual real world developed proposals. So as staff were comfortable with the 30% uh, site plan and plan commission also did uh, recommend approval uh, of the increase. Why not more? If it's got insulation value and everything else and it's a durable exterior, why not more? I'm just asking a question, so. Sure, there are questions about its overall durability long term. So we wanna make sure we limit it to definitely a, not the majority of an elevation. Uh, we do limit its use uh, along the bottom course of a single family or two family, or I'm sorry, one or two story buildings. We don't allow it near uh, loading docks because it can get damaged by lawn equipment, uh, vehicles, things of that nature. Okay. Move to approve the ordinance as presented. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve ordinance number 02-3-19. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 10B, action regarding ordinance number 02-1-19, amending section 17-1-200 parent A, zoning map of the Ashwaubenon Municipal Code of Ordinances. Mr. Aaron. This is a uh, kind of a housekeeping uh, process where we need to yearly or annually update the official zoning map of the village of Ashwaubenon. So this, the zoning map you see before you uh, near the dais uh, represents all the zoning changes that have occurred to date uh, through uh, this meeting. Move to approve as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve ordinance number 02-1-19. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 10C, action on ordinance number 02-2-19, establishing and authorizing a conditional use permit for a wireless telecommunications tower at 2190 South Ashland Avenue, parcel VA-89-4. Here. The requested conditional use permit is for a new uh, wireless telecommunications tower, uh, primarily for a Verizon uh, provider uh, at this time. The business, it's the location of the wireless tower will be just behind the Jubilius uh, floor coverings building on the Ashland Avenue frontage road. Uh, it'll be located to the rear uh, near color court uh, as it accesses up uh, uh, PCMC. Uh, the property is zoned B3 community business and a conditional use permit is required for a wireless telecommunications tower in this district. Under state requirements, uh, 2013 Wisconsin Act 20 um, there was real limitations imposed upon local municipalities and their ability to regulate the location of wireless telecommunication towers. Uh, basically, if it's not a residential zoning district, they are uh, an allowable use. The only limitations we can put on them are reasonable conditions necessary to uh, protect uh, the overall community. The conditions uh, that uh, we discussed with the applicant uh, who actually was driving up here uh, and uh, called me and could not make it in time for the meeting due to snow in Sheboygan. Uh, so he sends his regrets that he could not be here. 
uh, the conditions we discussed and approve, uh, agreed to with the applicant uh, as well as supported by site plan review committee and plan commission. Our approval of the wireless tower conditional use permit uh, by the village board based upon conditions of removal of the barbed wire on top of the fencing, addition of Techni or Nigra arbovita species spaced 10 feet on center to the southwest and north sides of the fencing, maintain screening of the fencing through use of vinyl slats or other material of comparable opacity until such time as the arborvita are a minimum of seven feet tall from finished grade. Uh, either site plan or plan commission, I forget which one, uh, did request that the color of the slats or the screening uh, be a beige, tan, or a brown color to blend in with the surrounding area. It seems to me like a, a decent place for it. It's innocuous, it's in a kind of a business area. I mean, it doesn't seem to be imposing on any uh, residential or, or, or other uh, someone who might object to it on aesthetic, per, on, uh, aesthetic grounds. Is, have you heard any negatives? Or? No. Not at all. Okay. I would agree. It's a, you know, if there's a good location for a, a wireless tele telecommunications tower, this would be it. Make a motion that we approve ordinance 02-2-19 with the, the recommendations. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve ordinance number 02-2-19 with the recommendations. <coughs> all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. 10D, action regarding ordinance number 02-4-19, amending the element apartments PUD for signage. Aaron. The original uh, PUD for the element apartments over here on uh, Element Way uh, did identify uh, no uh, interior lit uh, signage for the building. Uh, what the background was for that initially, I guess I'm not entirely sure. Uh, that predates my time, uh, however, uh, the request from the applicant is to allow for interior lit signage uh, for the identification signage on the corner of essentially Element Way and Marvell Lane. Uh, in discussions with the applicant, I did ask the question as far as brightness and how that might impact surrounding properties. Uh, he indicated to me that they actually have bedrooms for their apartments that are, will be six to eight feet from the sign and will dim it appropriately uh, in the evening so it does not become a nuisance to either their their residents uh, or the apartments across the street, either Marvell or uh, Element Way. Uh, the recommendation uh, from the Site Plan Review Committee and Plan Commission was uh, for approval. Uh, the applicant uh, also was driving up from Madison and sends his regrets that he could not make it. I guess the snow to the south was much worse than we were experiencing right now and uh, he requested that uh, Again, he sends his regrets and says uh, thank you. I move to approve ordinance 02-4-19, amending the element apartments PUD for signage. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second <coughs> approving ordinance number 02-4-19. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 10E, action regarding requested site plan review for the Cambria Hotel, parcel VA-54-9710 Mike McCarthy Way. Aaron. Come on, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> You're stealing the whole show tonight. <laughs> yes. The uh, requested site plan review is for the uh, new Cambria Hotel to be located on Mike McCarthy Way. This is to pr proposed to be a 100-unit uh, hotel. The site plan came to Village Board because it is located within the Sports Entertainment District. Uh, under Village Ordinance, any site plans within that district as well as the Village Center District do need to come to Plan Commission and Village Board uh, for approval as well. The hotel will be located on a separate 1.5 acre parcel of land currently where Bertrand Hydraulics uh, building is located. That building will be raised to make room uh, for the hotel. Uh, the hotel uh, we pulled up to the street to conform with the maximum setback requirements uh, for this area. Uh, also meets the other applicable setback, green space, and parking requirements. The exterior of the hotel uh, will meet the uh, now revised EFIS uh, requirements uh, as, uh, as approved by the Village Board uh, this evening. Uh, Andy Atradovic of uh, Road Act Development is in the audience uh, representing the applicant. Uh, however, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have regarding the hotel. 
Is this going to eliminate our porta potty village down there? <laughs> <laughs> this will actually be located on property uh, formerly owned by the bar. So this will not be on village owned property. So the, uh, the porta potty area, is that bar area or? Boy, when well, I'd just like to see it disappear. You know, when you got to go, you got to They go. will have, it's an acre and a half, I it, think. Oh, so they will have less parking availability. Um, that building obviously takes up a, a chunk of it, but sure. not, um, I wouldn't say that's probably more than half an acre or so of building, maybe three quarters mm -hmm. of an acre. So they still have a lot of area where they're parking cars in the Porta Potty City. So that will have to be adjusted. Okay. Boy, tough. Holy man. <laughs> I don't I don't mind the Porta Potty City down in that area as much as in the residential area. Maybe it should be by the Moose Lodge or something then. Just, <laughs> just kidding, Mary. <laughs> Controversial item here. <laughs> Move to approve the site plan for Cambria Hotel with the conditions that are listed. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the site plan for the Cambria Hotel on Mike McCarthy Way with the recommendations and conditions of approval. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? When, when do they plan starting uh, construction? So this winter yet or? As soon spring? as the snow is off the ground. Oh, okay. They're hoping for. Uh, end of March, beginning of April, with a 13 month build. Okay, thank you. Okay, 10F, action on annual renewal of a conditional use home occupation license located at 1394 Bruce Lane. Aaron. This is the last one for me, I promise. <laughs> um, this is a uh, annual renewal uh, of a home occupation license for a uh, conditional use permit for a uh, hair salon located at 1394 Bruce Lane. Um, Typically, this is a, a, a pretty easy renewal. Um, there was a uh, notification through our uh, short-term rental uh, software that we use that indicated that this home was being used as a short-term rental. Uh, upon further analysis and review, uh, there was actually a review from October 2018 uh, for this, uh, this address uh, and this house. Uh, the uh, the owner uh, and the applicant, uh, there's some discrepancy as far as whether Airbnb has or has not paid the room tax on her behalf. Uh, we're hoping to get some confirmation uh, that the room tax has been paid. Uh, and if it is, then it's not an issue. But at this point, that's still unclear whether that has been paid. And the, uh, the listing is actually still uh, on Airbnb as a short-term rental. Um, I just checked that again at 2 o'clock this afternoon to confirm that. In order to recommend approval uh, of the, the home occupation license, we want to make sure that all fees uh, do the village are paid, as is typically the case. So in this case, that would be the short-term rental uh, Brown County room tax uh, for October 2018. Uh, so as conditions of approval, we're recommending in discussions with, uh, with Attorney Wachowicz, recommending a three-month uh, renewal to get to allow the applicant to get the information together, demonstrating that payment to the Brown County room tax uh, has been accomplished or will be accomplished. Um, if the applicant wishes to continue to rent her home, uh, she has indicated that she does not wish to continue, but again, the ad is still uh, available. If she wishes to continue to rent her home for short-term rentals of less than 10 days per year, uh, obtaining a Brown County tourist rooming house license and notifying the village of the first day of 2019 as required under state statute. Um, if the applicant wishes to rent her home for short-term rentals of 10 days or more, obtaining a village of Ashwaubenon on short-term rental license. And yeah, 10 days or more a year? 10 days or more per year, oh, correct. Yeah, okay, yep, all right, thank you. Uh, obtaining or uh, meeting those conditions, then we'd recommend uh, renewal uh, for the, uh, the full year. But up, at this, up until those are met, we're recommending a three-month uh, kind of grace period to get that information together. When, when would that when would that three months end? Uh, three months from today. From today. Oh, today. Okay. Well, 
as a as a village representative, one of the village representatives on the room tax commission, this has been a, a real thorn in the side of the room tax commission, and I'm glad to see this um, this here under these circumstances. I think um, just so folks understand, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Allison, but the city of Green Bay has a has an agreement with the same or, or with Airbnb. I'm sorry, and Airbnb collects the supposed to collect the tax on these but when they send the the um, funds to the city of green bay they include it goes by zip code it, it does not it does not well that was what was alleged by door county and i'm sure that's the information provided by door county but it is not happening here locally oh um, there was a property in which we thought that was occurring two properties that thought that they had gotten it collected. So we thought Green Bay had it. It went back to Airbnb who verified it was not collected. Um, it sounds like Airbnb, it's not very clear um, to the people who are listing their homes when it say, says it's collecting tax. It's mm -hmm. really about the 5% and the half percent sales tax, not room tax. Mm, okay. um, so we just, <coughs> incidentally, I have reached out to Airbnb asking if we could get a similar agreement. If we get that far, we'll come back to you on okay. that. But it appears, and we have other people have told us they've collected it or thought it. So our responses show us that from what you've got done through Airbnb, right, right. and thus far, no one has showed us that okay. information. All right. Well, I, I, I'm hesitant to do this, but in one way, but I'm not hesitant in another way. If, if if at the end of three months it shows that this this person is not paid, I I would strongly encourage us to issue a citation. She's in violation of the, of, a, of the code, and we need to start taking care of this so that that the room tax is paid as as, as it should be paid, so that the bonds for the rest center and the KI center can be paid off the way they're supposed to be paid off, i.e., with the with the room tax. So. I know it's not not here tonight for this, but I'm just just giving people a heads up. If she, if this person does not, and we find out she didn't pay, then I would strongly recommend that we we pursue action in municipal court. So that's my that's my two cents worth. <clears throat> I don't disagree with Ken at all, but where's the disconnect here? I'm missing something. Um, if she's listing with Airbnb and they're supposed to be collecting the taxes and paying the taxes. Why is she being held accountable? We do not have an agreement currently with Airbnb. Only the oh. city of Green Bay does, and they are getting a lump sum from Airbnb for um, for Airbnb locations within Green Bay. It's just that they're not getting um, a list of all the properties and the nights and all that kind of stuff. It's, there's not really a way to audit it. So there was some confusion for some time as to whether possibly there were addresses that they might have been getting money for. And we thought that might have been the case in terms of what was reported to us by experience of other people. But now when we had one of our own properties and we were able to verify that, that's not the case. The homeowner is confused because it's saying on there it's collecting taxes. It's just not explicitly enumerating, you know, state tax, um, round county tax, room tax. And if they did the math, they'd be able to figure it out. But okay, they so don't she, necessarily see it. It doesn't like list it on there. So okay, so she, she thinks that she is, but she in fact is not. And okay, I think so she, in this particular case, I think there's some added confusion about what room tax even is okay. in this particular instance. I think there's some additional confusion. So it didn't even go to Green Bay. She just didn't pay it at all. It I mean, not, nope. Okay. nope. Okay. So what would you like, Madam Chair? You want you want approval under these conditions of the three months yeah okay i'll make that motion go ahead okay we have a motion and a second to recommend a three-month extension on the home occupation license with the con with the, with con the conditions thank as you. listed in the green sheet for 1394 bruce lane thank you any more discussion all those in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed motion carried 10G, request to proceed with the Public Safety Operations Study, RFP. Allison. I wasn't ready. I thought Aaron was going to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> on a roll. 
Um, so we have talked about the public safety study a few months ago um, in turning, terms of just doing an overall evaluation of the, um, the organization from a staffing perspective. I think there's um, concern by the employees that we don't have kind of a five-year plan or a vision um, that, you know, questions about whether we're appropriately staffed or not. Um, and then just overall, what are some efficiencies or something low-hanging fruit, what is out there? Um, so we, what's in your packet is the actual RFP that was um, drafted and then we formed an evaluation committee. They've gone through it. Um, they agree with it. They made some changes as well. Um, so what we're proposing to do is if we would get your blessing today, we'd actually get that out on the street at the end of the week um, and start soliciting actual proposals and then there's a full schedule in the back um, in terms of we would receive proposals, um, do interviews, it would come back to you, I believe it says the end of March, um, for an actual approval and a dollar amount. We really don't know an actual dollar amount or range at this point. Um, and then from there, once it's awarded, we would proceed with the actual study in hopes that we would have it done by end of summer, early fall. Hello, anybody I'll move to, else? Uh, Approve the RFP as presented. Second. Motion and a second to approve the RF Public Safety Operations Study RFP as presented. Is there anything we're missing in this whole pr proposal? Or, I mean, is it from top to bottom, sideways to right to left, to everything? Correct. We don't know what we don't know. You know, we don't really have anything locally to compare to or even statewide. Um, so our hope is to maybe get a consultant that has more national exposure um, and experience particularly with public safety that's more frequent in Colorado and um, uh, Michigan. Um, just okay. Well, and, and also, you know, to kind of plan for the future, you know, we don't know if our public safety department should be operating the same way 5, 10, 15 years from now. So. I see the goal is to try to have this done by the end of September. Is that for budgetary purposes? Um, between budget and actually contract negotiations as well. Uh, if we were to implement changes, you know, whether it's adding officers or trying to state change um, shift schedules or job duties and stuff, those would all require some discussions. Okay. And, and so our actual evaluation committee includes union officers, um, members at the supervisory level, the chief. Tony, myself. So we're kind of covering the gamut in terms of trying to get everybody's buy-in and, and input into the entire process. Okay. Okay. I have a motion and a second to proceed. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. H, request to approve amendment to Town of Lawrence Intergovernmental Agreement. Allison. So we have an intergovernmental agreement with um, Lawrence that um, goes all the way back to when there were some annexation um, disputes, particularly around um, Grant Street. And if you look at a map of our southern border, there's like a couple little teeth, I always call them, um, on, on the north side of Grant um, th that remain in the town of Lawrence. The agreement addressed that if the, you know, in terms of services, do we make them switch over whatever happens. Um, in this particular case, what's driving this is one of the teeth um, has been, the land has been donated to a church and they would like to commence construction and um, it would be non-taxable. There's not necessarily a driving factor for us to um, be adversarial in terms of what's happening there. Um, if you recall back from when we did a study on the development of that whole Southwest quadrant, um, there's kind of a complexity or weave, if you will, of where the services need to come from. Some come off of sand acres uh, through the golf course, but some needed to come from the south in Lawrence uh, in order to just from a depth capacity. Um, so this really uh, solves that problem and work, us working together, the town will serve those um, particular properties or they extend the services, but there is some oversizing um, that is needed and we would end up covering those costs as those would be driven by us. Once we need additional connections, we would be responsible for kind of pursuing that into the property 
to the north. Um, so uh, they asked for this agreement. Um, we are in agreement with it in terms of principle, um, and we would like to move forward with that. And it's a good, good thing. How much longer does this intergovernmental agreement with Lawrence? Uh, with, when does it terminate? Do you recall? I sure. do not. Sorry. Well, I'll tell you, this was before I was on the board. I'll never forget. I, I was at a meeting and I, I objected strenuously to this agreement. We received not the village received nothing. It was all in favor of Lawrence. They didn't want us to to um, pursue any kind of annexation and, and all kinds of protections for Lawrence and the village, in my opinion, received nothing via this agreement. So when it comes up for, uh, if I'm still here, I, it's gonna be a real big issue with me. I, I, I just could not see us adopting that agreement at all. But this is a good part of it. I, I certainly don't argue with that, but boy, that agreement was, in my opinion, just terrible for the village. It was all in favor of Lawrence. I don't know, I have no idea why we, why we agreed to it. So, and it, would you do me a favor? Look and see when when that expires. Would you when when that runs out? Because it's coming up on well nine years now. It's yeah. For some reason, I think it's like a total of twenty, but I don't. Count. Okay. All right. Thank I'll you. All right. All right. I'll make a motion to approve the amendment to the Town of Lawrence Intergovernmental Agreement as provided in Item Ten H and described in Item Ten H. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the amendment to the Town of Lawrence Intergovernmental Agreement. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 10I, award of Ningio Cares donation. Allison. Um, so if you recall a few years ago, we had some issues with um, a cyber, cyber attack of sorts. And so one of our solutions was just trying to make employees more aware, um, both in the office and out of the office, of what can happen from a cyber attack and things to be more aware of with um, using your phones, your computers, and being more attuned to emails, all sorts of things. And so we you approved a um, contract that we have with a company called Ninjo, and they do videos monthly that go out to all employees. and. Um, we ensure compliance with all our employees because we find it really important. Um, the, it's actually a good thing. It, it's, they're like three minute videos that are um, kind of like Japanese anime type things. They're kind of like adult cartoon looking-ish um, without adult content. But they take actual cyber issues and put them in um, kind of layman's terms for those of us who are not IT. Um, geeks. So, um, and then our employees also have the ability to watch, have family members watch it as well, extend it out. But this particular company ended up with, it did a competition amongst all their clients at different tier levels of employees. And in our particular size category, we were the winner because we have 100% participation. <laughs> so, we are able to essentially we receive a donation that we need to pass on to somebody else so that is a five thousand dollar donation but we even though we are technically like a 501c3 we're not able to keep it and so we need to pass it along to someone else of our choice um, they will come and do the big check fancy um, giveaway um, our recommendation from a staff perspective was to donate it to the historical society as they are still trying to pursue um, expansion of the old community center to house the um, the old fire truck. So we would like your blessing to move forward with that. Move to approve. I'll second it. I think that's a, a great thing to do back for the historical society and the community to try to do that. So and I congratulate the staff on accomplishing that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to award the Ningio Cares dollars to the Historical Society. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 10J, informational update regarding splash study. Mr. Martin. Yes, good evening, everybody. Uh, this study is to discuss the relocation of porta potties on Mike McCarthy Way. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you re <laughs> if if you remember briefly, we briefly discussed this during budget season this past year, um, and that and that was a, a study that was 
starting between uh, the Central Borden County Water Authority and the Green Bay Water Utility on uh, collaborating, working together on, on future projects or future items. And I just wanted to get the, the, the real framework or the, the basic discussion of that is on, in, on the sheet attached. Uh, it involves items uh, whereby the two entities and their membership can work together on, on items uh, uh, as examples. Uh, clearing houses for information uh, regarding the DNR, the PSC, uh, leak detection studies, uh, cross connection uh, inspections, uh, billing and customer service, after hours calls, uh, joint training, things of that nature. They're, they're lower hanging fruit at the beginning, to borrow Allison's term, uh, whereby uh, the communities can work together on different topics or different items and then uh, at the same time recognize some cost savings as these projects get done. Uh, we've already done a couple of these with Green Bay Water, as you're aware of when we signed our contract with Green Bay Water. Uh, some of our billing services were transferred over there. We recently, in this past budget season, transferred the remainder of our billing services over to Green Bay Water, so we're doing some of these things already. But some of the areas where, where it may benefit uh, Ashwaubenon in the future is, is some of the joint training, things of that nature. Uh, this field has a lot of people, uh, a lot of workers that are uh, nearing re retirement and, and there isn't a lot of backfill. It's not, a, it's not a glamorous job to go into and it's, it's seeing a, a downturn in the number of people that are available to go into this field of work in the future and there's going to be a big need for recruiting, a big need for training, things of that nature. With everybody working together, you're able to pull your resources, do things like that. So that's what this study is in, in regards to is how all the <coughs> communities in this area, the water utilities can work together in the future. So it's informational at this time. Uh, we'd bring back anything of, of substance in the future. Okay, any questions? Does, does the other... There's the second water utility in the in the area, the De Pere, and is that part of this as well? Yes. Yeah, the two entities that are discussing this are Green Bay Water and Central Brown County okay. Water. And then those of us that are members of each sit in and listen to the topics being discussed. So the Central Brown County people, are they go, do they go to Manitowoc or, or are they? Yes, you know? they purchased their water uh, through Manitowoc. That was the big struggle years ago, who was going with Green Hill. Okay. Correct. How's that and that's, that's why you're seeing this take the form of a study. Um, a lot of us that are around here remember living through all of that and the animosity and the struggles through all of that. Right. And this is the public works departments, the park departments, everybody's worked together on separate projects in the past. The water utilities are one of the last entities to work together and it's kind of bridging that, that gap from that time. Who came up with the, with the acronym? It had to be an engineer, Splash. I think the consultant did. <laughs> they were pretty proud of themselves. And <laughs> even as an engineer, we thought it was a little flaky, but. <laughs> All right. Looks like Stevens Point Schools to me. Uh, yeah, 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 that's, yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay, thanks. You have that a score, was, uh, no score yet. Well, Information only. Okay, 10K award for quote for skid steer replacement. Doug. Yes, this was approved in the 2019 budget and, and the village currently has uh, both the public works and park and rec departments have uh, Bobcat skid steers. Uh, but instead of just awarding it to Bobcat, we wanted to get quotes from um, any other interested vendors just to make sure the prices that we were getting were fair and uh, we received two quotes, one from Bobcat, one from Cat, uh, with a Bobcat quote coming in low at 35591 And we recommend uh, award of the quote to Bobcat Plus for, for this purchase. Um, we've had a good track record in terms of maintenance uh, and history on, on these vehicles, and we have a number of those attachments already here at the village, so there wouldn't be any need for any uh, new attachments to be purchased. 
Move to approve the quote from uh, for a 2019 Bobcat from Bobcat Plus for 35591 Second. We have a motion and a second to accept the Bobcat award for $35,591. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, 10L, Schneider Development Site, VA-162 and VA-174-1, Asbestos and Lead Abatement Contract Reward. Mr. Martin. Uh, this contract is in regards to the uh, former Schneider Trucking Maintenance Facility on South Broadway, uh, just east of the broadway Hanson intersection. Um, I think Allison and Aaron have briefed you in the past on, on the development activities in that area. Uh, what we're tasked with is in, is in this contract is uh, abating all of the lead and asbestos on that site prior to any development or any utility and road reconstruction. Uh, so in working with McMahon and Associates, pulled together the contract for uh, abatement of both lead and asbestos, bid it out. Uh, received bids on February 18th and had a low bid of $84,481 from Asbestos Removal Incorporated. Uh, we've worked with them in before, worked with them in before, excuse me. On <laughs> we had that timer just about right, didn't we? Apparently after you speak in monotone for a few seconds, these buggers go right to sleep, so. Um, yeah, yeah. We've worked with the Asbestos Removal Incorporated in the past and have had a, uh, good experiences with them. Would recommend approval of the contract or award of the contract to Asbestos Removal in the amount of $84,481. Again, this is the first step in this process. From here, once the site is abated, then we can start with the demolition, the utility work, the roadway work this this summer. Move to approve the award to Asbestos Removal Inc. Second. In the amount stated in the bid. We have a motion and a second to approve the asbestos and lead abatement contract to asbestos removal for eighty four thousand four hundred eighty one dollars. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Ten M request to approve village hall signage. I know it's hard to believe we're actually going to do this, but only if you approve it. <laughs> um, so we, with all the relocation, it was good that we didn't address Village Hall signage previously. Um, and it's apropos that um, Mr. Stubb is in the audience today because it's his logo that we are now going to splash all around Village Hall if that's possible. Um, what you have in front of you is um, the proposal, it's, it's two pieces. One is to work with Reinhold Sign to do signage on the interior and there's some pictures in your packet of what that would look like. We have a few minor tweaks on language, um, but otherwise more or less that's what it would look like. Um, and then um, we would also like, currently Terry um, changes the board. We're required to post meetings uh, for each week and they're all placed by letters and um, slid into that board. What we'd like to do is drop a monitor in the um, lobby itself where that credenza type thing is and then we would be able to just program and just rotate on that signage as we need to change things or add other community notes or whatever. We could do that right within the lobby where people can more able to see it, more frequently see it. Um, so the total amount is $8,123 for both of those projects. What kind of signage is this again? What do you mean, like by material, or do you mean by no. like where it's going? What, what do you call it in the? Well, I'm calling it like wayfinding uh, signage. I just want to make sure you said that. <laughs> Interior <laughs> wayfinding. Okay. <laughs> because they Everybody know how to get that, right? here. <laughs> they just don't okay. know what to do one, once Mark. they're inside. <laughs> good one, Mark. <clears throat> And what are we using? What kind of funds are we using for do this? 2017 <laughs> excess funds. Okay. I'm going to spend it before you get to it Thank for you. interior <laughs> wayfinding signage. Yeah. Just thought I'd reiterate uh, what we were doing here. So interior. I I wrote some notes on that mark, and it was I had your name written on it, and I, <laughs> and I um I struggle with this. Um, is it really needed? 
Um, it looks nice, but especially the electronic billboard. Um, I just, to me, that's just a, you know, I, I mean, to be able to just move that off the wall, the, the, the little lettering, you can certainly move that on some kind of a floor stand right in front. I go to, I go to a, a certain clinic on the, on the east side of town that's a pretty good size place, two sto three story, and that's all they have. And it's, you know, I, just to have an electric, what was the electronic part, the $2,500 or so? Um, yeah, but it's, it's a combination of things. I think the part of it is the wiring and the electronic, the actual wiring work yeah. that has to be done to drop it out of the s ceiling and bring the data into there. Um, the the board itself is a fairly large monitor um, that is, um, I think it was a thousand dollars. So the, yeah. the rest is more labor and then like a software piece. When I saw that, when I w w read the words wayfinding, uh, first thing I thought of was in, in the future, you know, and Mark's brought it up in the past, I, I think that money be sped, better spent um, on the village uh, street signing, wayfinding for residents than have, have the people that are walking into the, the building here have a pretty, um, you know, TV to look at. I just, that's not... You know, we can explore a smaller TV or something like that. It's a 60-inch TV. The point is to be able to walk in and just see these are the list of meetings and be able to see them all at once and then also put the additional notes on it. But we can try and reduce that particular cost if you'd like. We can explore some other options. We just need to explore the other options. <clears throat> just kidding. That's fine. We've looked at in the past trying to incorporate something in where people stand to do like or like not where they stand but where you first come in we've tried like different kiosk things none of it ever unfortunately is very cheap no but well, what's the issue oh there's Frankly, there's huge issues when you could every stand day, in the lobby every every day. 15 okay, not, minutes okay. yeah. and I'm people not do not know where to go i mean literally okay. for like you could stand there for 10 minutes and you would have somebody there they walk in and they're like, where do you yeah. go? I've been asking for signage. When, when people walk in the front door, I've been asking for signage. Remember that little court clerk payment thing when Bobby Christus was, was in by the, where the public works is now? I even asked for just that to have people because they walk in that front door and they literally don't know where to go. We're on our way walking to a meeting and People are just standing out there looking around going like, where do I go? So we're always saying, you know, can we help you find something? And we're okay. directing them where to go. So could if, if we don't want to do the, the monitor thing that changes, can we at least approve? You can have separation. Approve the parts of it like we could, could do the um, public safety thing. Don't. Well, well, you have the Ryan here's, part and the monitor part. I, get a separation. I, I, Well, if, if you know, you guys are here every day, and if there's 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 a legitimate issue, I, you know, I wouldn't have a problem with. It. I just the little I I walk into the building, and maybe it's once a week, every other week, maybe different times of the day. I just I don't. But you guys are here every day, yeah. So I mean, it's if it's interfering, it's going to make your jobs easier. You know, great. And I just didn't. Part this of it, like we the, host a lot of other things. Um, that other people come here for, you know, the, the Rural Water Association comes what, quarterly, something like that. I mean, we have other groups that come in and use the facility, whether it's other meetings and stuff like that, that it'd just be nice to kind of say, hey, from, okay. this meeting is held in conference room A, this room is, you know, every construction meeting that Doug has to have, there's usually a group of people that are all like, where am I going if they haven't been here? For whatever reason, this building is just ends up being confusing. And a lot of people are coming for something, but they don't know that they're coming to see the clerk and that, that's, that the clerk does bartender's license and liquor licenses and voting. They're just coming for a bartender's license and they're, you know, 22 years old and they, they don't know where to start, really. Or we'll have people come in to pay their traffic ticket. It's the other end of the building. Yeah. You get that all yeah. the time, every day. Okay. Just, the, just so I understand, this... The proposed sign that we're talking about here would replace these black boards that had the what little white letters on them? 
Well, that one just can come down. That one that I see in that okay. particular picture, that has just staff names on it and room numbers, and we took the room numbers off, and nobody, but frankly, for the most part, people aren't coming in to, to see a particular person, or they already have an appointment, and we've talked to them and said, you know, this is where to come. Um, but nobody, like, if from the public walks in and says, hey, I want to meet with one of us, necessarily. Uh, but just outside this door, the, okay. we are required to post that. So every week, Terry goes through and changes and says, this is what's happening this week. The court changes their board. This is what's happening this week. And we're required to do that. So they're literally sliding in all the different letters for what the meetings are, the dates for the meetings, oh, all see. that kind okay. of stuff. It's just a manual process. And we're just trying to make that automated so somebody can click two buttons, push send, and move on You know, five minutes instead of half an hour if this was being requested in a normal budget I would probably have more of an issue with it than excess funds from previous years I guess I mean it still goes to the point of people trying to find things and and that's my point with this exterior signage way fine sign so yeah. I mean I think it's uh, like I say we're not here every day we know where we're going here where most people if they come in here once a once a year, once mm -hmm. a, every five years, they're probably lucky. We've had Park Department relocated two <clears throat> years ago now. Two years ago. Two years, and we still have people coming in saying, "Hey, we want to sign up for this program," and we, you know, we try to help them here, redirect them. But I mean, that's how little some people come, and they just don't. They just don't know. But on a daily basis, you're running into that, obviously, what oh, you're yeah. saying. Oh, on yeah. a every five-minute basis. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I had no idea. All the time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Often. Yeah. Very often. All right. I'll be the big spender. I'll move to approve the uh, Village Hall signage request. I will second because I see this as really necessary. Having stood in that hallway wondering where I am and where I should go not too, not too long ago. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the signage as presented. Further questions, comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 10N, action on NRDA slash GLRI aquatic enhancement bids rejection. Mr. Rex. Uh, these are the grant funds that were awarded to us last year. Um, we've had a few speed bumps and that the bids, each time we're trying to redo them in a different way, working with Stantec and the bids keep on coming in too high. So we broke it down again. We've got another bid out right now, but this is, this rejection is for the second round of bids, which were open on February 1st. And I think the low bid was 217,000. That's still about $25,000. Uh, higher than what we have the ability to spend with our grant money. And so we've worked with Stantec and, and hopefully we've got the third round correct going out of the gate here. Bid opening is coming up actually at the end of this week. But this is for the last round of bids which were all too high. So staff is recommending rejection so we can hopefully proceed forward with the third round of bids during the opening this week. What's the Tillman property? Manso Flats. I'm sorry. Oh, Manso. Manso Flats. So that's in the C, the seaplane area where they ha he has his own kind of man-made dike that goes out there, the seawall. So that has absolutely no water flow in it. Um, there's no way for the water really to move through there. Um, it's kind of gets quite full of algae and debris during, um, you know, throughout the year. Okay. And so we're going to try and put some pass-through pipes into the into the seawall to get the water to flow more. All right. Um, and then also sink a couple of logs in there, um, as well as at Ashwaubenon May Park, um, as well as building a fish shoal or two for additional fish spawning area. Okay. And uh, I know you still need to vote, but one thing, probably in the next week or two, um, ATC Transmission Company, as well as MJ Electric out of De Pere, um, we'll be delivering the poles over in Ashwaubenon May Park. Uh, those were the heron and egret nesting platforms. Um, and they will be installing those probably within the next couple of weeks. And we're hoping to talk to some of the local media and get some coverage of that as well, which would be kind of cool. 
Thank you. I move to approve the request to reject the bids. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the rejection of the bids. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Um, Rex, did you get my little paper that I sent to the Park and Rec <laughs> Department the other day? I did. The DNR would be not in any kind of favor of doing that on our own. <laughs> I guarantee it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, that, it, that was that was Oneida's <laughs> personal property right. area, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking there's some different. Well, wouldn't that be nice there? if we could just put trees on the ice, and then when the ice goes away, the trees go in the water, and they're fish. And there, and there they go. Thought it was yep. great. Didn't cost two hundred seventy-four thousand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. North. Items for next agenda. If you have any, call the office number twelve. During the meeting, the Village Board of the Village of Ashwab and I may convene into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin Statute Section 19.851E for the purpose of possible discussion and action on deliberating or negotiating the investing of public funds regarding the development of Parcel VA-162 related to Tax Incremental District Number 3 and VA-90-4-10 and VA-90-4-9 and TIF Number 5 where competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. The Village Board may thereafter reconvene into open session pursuant to Wisconsin Statute Section 1985 uh, Sub 2 to report the results of the closed session and consider the balance of the agenda. Move to go to closed session. Second. Roll call. Trustee Williams. Yes. Trustee Zerbel. Yes. Trustee Mark Williams. Yes. Trustee Bukowski? Yes. Trustee Melcheski? Yes. President Kardoski? Yes. And Trustee Paul is excused. We are in closed session. <laughs>